Oh, yep, yep. I was gonna say, we're, oh, yeah. Welcome back, guys, and welcome to another episode of Connecticut Angler and the first autumn episode of 2022. That's right, guys. We are just a couple days into autumn here. It has actually is a remarkably chilly day. Like this is like a mid-October day, really, even though this is only late September right now. We need a little bit of context from this. From roughly, I would say, I'm working up top of my head, but I would say mid-July through to just about the end of August, we had a pretty brutal drought here in Connecticut. And not only did we have a drought, but we had a heat wave at the same time. This was really, really tough on some of our smaller wild trout streams. They were starting to run extremely low on water, and the temperature of what water was in those streams was starting to just skyrocket. Now, luckily, the drought is behind us. We have had several heavy rains over the last three or four weeks. Most of the small streams here in Connecticut have returned at least to sort of the low normal range. That's a good thing. It's also a good thing that overnight temperatures have been cool enough lately that I think you'd be hard pressed to find a small stream where the water temperature is much higher than uh, the low 60s, honestly. So thermally, the trout are also in a good spot. The problem I've had is over the last two weeks that I've been going back out and hitting some of these small streams for the first time since the drought has ended and since we've gotten into this cooler weather, is that I haven't really been finding these trout in the places that I would typically expect to find them. And I think that even though the drought is definitely in the rear view by a couple weeks now, I don't think the trout have made any aggressive moves to kind of shuffle back out through the entire stream system. I, th I think the trout are just distributed very oddly in the stream right now, and it's making finding them surprisingly difficult in some cases. I have gone out trying to record a small stream trout video four times now, and I just haven't really come away with enough fish to make a video that I think would be fun or interesting to watch. Finally geared up here, uh, using the three weight today. Dry dropper rig, pretty standard stuff. All right guys, well now that I've kind of set the scene for you and gone over some of the dilemmas as of late, trying to find wild trout, uh, it's time to start hitting this stream and see if I can uh, change my luck out here and actually find some wild trout. In this case, we're gonna be going for wild browns. Now, this is a wild trout stream, so I'm not gonna reveal the name, uh, but suffice it to say, this is a stream that I prospected, uh, I wanna say in springtime this year. I found a ton of wild browns here, but just because I found a ton of wild browns here in the spring doesn't mean it's going to be that easy now because like I have said, a lot of the streams I've been visiting have um, yielded almost nothing. So, crossing my fingers here, let's see if we can find us some wild browns. Okay, moving through uh, a pretty big culvert here. I'm gonna take the polarized glasses off for this, otherwise I'm gonna bust my butt. <clears throat> That was a fish. Oh. Okay guys, well, you know, I've probably cut down a lot of the footage of me kind of working my way up this stream for the last roughly half an hour. I've been working really fast. I've been hitting a lot of spots where if there were trout, I would have expected takes relatively quickly. And what I've been finding is virtually nothing, which kind of confirms some of my fears that I'm gonna have the same issue here that I've had in a lot of small streams, just to say, this section of the stream, which was incredibly productive this spring, seems almost barren. However, 
at the very least, this little spot here did just yield my first take. I didn't really get to see what it was, and my dry fly drowned, I think, it was naturally drowning at about the same time that fish took, which is why I, I missed getting a good hook set. But I did roll a fish, I did see it, it probably was a brown. So now the trick is gonna be just getting one to the net to at least, at the very least, not leave here skunked, right? <laughs> Crossing my fingers on this one. Okay. A little pocket here, most of this is super shallow. There might be something right in the pocket up at the head of the pool. Oh, did you see that top water take, guys? Something came up and assaulted that elk here, Caddis, and we got him. We got him. It's a little fish, but first fish we've had on. And boy, whatever this is, it has a lot of heart. Oh, 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 am I tangled up? I am tangled up, but I got him out. And yes, it's a brown. It is a brown. All right. Awesome. And wow, what a gorgeous fish this is. First trout, one of these beautiful wild browns. Still got those par marks at its current size, which is probably barely six inches. Beautiful wild brown. Let's uh, get this guy back in the water. All right, guys. First trout to the net. And that fish was a pretty ferocious taker uh, of the elk hair caddis. I mean, came up and assaulted the elk hair caddis on the first drift, missed it, put the very next cast out there, and he came up and hit it again, and this time we got him. Beautiful little wild brown. So at the very least, we're not going to leave here skunked. Now that said, again, even with having gotten this fish, and as happy as I am about that, the volume of fish that I have found through this stream section so far is immensely reduced from where it was in the springtime. But let's see if, as we continue upstream, maybe we start bumping into some of these fish. Maybe it is that they've moved further upstream uh, in the summer to seek out cooler water that was more fresh from kind of the, the headwater uh, brooks of this stream. Uh, that's certainly a possibility. There's only one way to find out. Oh, got one. All right, all right. Let's see here. Did I get him? Got him. Boy, this brown is even smaller than the last one, though an equally gorgeous fish. And this one, once again, came up to the top, took that elk here caddis. But uh, yeah, let's get this guy back in the water. Thanks, buddy. All right, guys, not bad. You know, I, I kind of was not expecting these fish to be holding in some of these shallow areas and so aggressively coming up to take the fly at the top. I thought with the, with the chillier weather, with the relatively low water, these fish would be kind of spooky and I would probably get more takes in the nymph than anything else and that the fish would be holding in the deeper pools, not in the shallow areas. So this stream has really kind of turned my expectations upside down, but I think it's about time that I adapt to that. I'm going to start making sure I fish a lot of these shallower pockets, seeing if we keep getting these takes at the top on the El Caracatus. But awesome, guys. Two fish down. Let's see what else we can find. Ooh, but look at this pool. Our, oh, yep, yep. I was gonna say, we're, oh yeah, yeah. Look at this fish jumping like mad. All right, all right. Smash the elk hair caddis up top. Yes, another brown. All right, guys, that's what I'm talking about. All right, guys, I, you know, I knew this, this pool looked really, really good. And I've said that about a number of pools we've hit. And indeed, there have been a lot of pools I've hit so far in this stream that I really thought were gonna yield a fish and they've yielded nothing. But this one looked even better than those. And it's reassuring that it actually did come through with the fish. Because if it was barren, I would really have to start considering if it was worth my while to continue moving upstream. But indeed, the moment we were up in some of the faster stuff up here, uh, we had that fish come up, smash the elk hair caddis up top. Um, and this spot is large enough to accommodate probably several fish. So I'm really curious to see if we can get another here. Let's find out. I'm 
waiting for something to take this nymph. It's actually making me consider, like, should I even have the nymph on there at this point? I've gotten so little action on it. Ooh! I just rolled one. Dang. That would have been my second fish out of this spot. Let's see if we can nab another. Oh, gosh! That was another big take on top. I don't know if that fish would have felt the hook. I may get him to take again. Even if he's not willing to come to the top again, I'm wondering if I could get him to take the, the nymph, maybe. Yeah. I actually did not see this fish take. I lost my fly. I think it might have even drowned. He may have taken this, the, the dry fly drowned some surface. So another brown, maybe a little bit larger than the other ones we've caught up to this point, but not by, not by a lot. So, you know, it is looking like perhaps my theory was correct. Namely that in this particular case, uh, as the water heated up during the drought, um, rather than moving downstream to try to find bigger water, which is what you might think these fish would do in a scenario like that, instead, they decided to prioritize thermal comfort, which is to say they took the chance of moving upstream to skinnier water because what they really needed was cooler water. And the further upstream you go, the closer you are to the groundwater seeps um, and the cooler water you find. Okay, guys, absolutely gargantuan pool for this little stream. Huge. Now, the first half of it is particularly shallow. I could damn near sight fish anything that was in there. But the forward half of this pool really holds some potential. So, I've got my fingers crossed here. And dare I say, I'd be surprised if we don't get at least one. I was actually just about getting ready to pick up and cast when I saw the the dry fly drown all of a sudden. This is this a fall fish or is this a brown? Oh no, it's a brown. It's a brown. Little guy. Got him. Yeah. Another taker on the nymph. Another beautiful little fish. Let's let him go. All right, guys, we're up to what? Six browns? Not bad, not bad. Now, it has been kind of a confusing mixed bag on this stream, right? I've come to really great pools. I've said, boy, if I don't get fish out of here, I have to reconsider everything. And I've gotten fish. I've also come to really great pools, said the same thing, and I found absolutely nothing. So what can we make of that? Why is it that some of these great pools are yielding fish, some of these great pools are yielding nothing? To me, what that's saying is, it's just a reflection of the fact that the density of fish in this stream, or at least in this section of the stream right now, is relatively low. The fish can afford to spread out, and in fact there's enough really nice lies in this stream that these fish don't need to crowd each other at all. And in fact some of these really good lies can even be left vacant because all of the fish already have a great lie and this is just kind of extra I guess. So that's what that's saying to me. It doesn't mean that you skip the good spots, you gotta fish them. But it does mean that, you know, we're gonna get a lot of these spots that look fantastic and may just have nothing. All right, another really, really nice pool here. Definitely has potential. Hey, all right. Yeah. 
It's gonna hit right at the tail out. Right at the tail out. Took the nymph. Another brown. Not bad at all. Sort of comparable size to what we've gotten thus far. All right, well, I'm kind of crouching in the cascades here, but all right, guys, not bad. Another brown. That one took the nymph once again. And I mean, we have some really nice looking water up ahead here. You know, this is one of those days where I'm gonna count fish because I've caught so few fish over the last like three or four outings at small streams. Yeah, I'm counting them this time. So we're up to seven to the net now, which is pretty awesome. We've missed a couple. This has been very productive. Way, way more productive than the last three or four streams I've been to, which is reassuring. Now, I am on a section of this stream at this point that I have never fished. I turned back uh, this spring a long way downstream. This is essentially new water to me, um, and it's proven to be pretty damn good water. All right, folks. Well, I didn't film it, but what, what happened, surprisingly, is that at one point, I glanced upstream, and lo and behold, I saw another fly angler up ahead fishing a pool. Did not expect to see another angler on this stream today, but so it was. As it turned out, he had actually parked significantly further upstream and had hiked his way down and had just hopped in the stream to start working his way upriver. So, he would have been going in the same direction I was going. And I figured, you know, I've gotten my fill. Right? I mean, we've gotten, what, seven browns to the net. Definitely exceeded my expectations after I've had so much difficulty in small streams lately. So I left the river to him for the rest of the day. I am hiking out now. Great outing. So glad I was able to uh, find a decent volume of fish. And I guess, there's not much more to say, except that if you did enjoy the episode, please hit that thumbs up button. If you like what I'm doing out here, consider subscribing, and I will catch you guys next time. Okay guys, I'm in a power line cut here, walking back towards the road so I can get back to my truck. I came upon this garter snake here. I'm gonna see if I can catch it. Unfortunately, he definitely sees me. Yeah, he's mad. <laughs> oh, he's pissed. Woo!